How's life? I'm good. Life is good. It's good. good. It's good. Going smooth right now. What's the, where's the, where'd you get the sweatshirt from? Uh, a little app called ASOS. Okay. Yeah, chilling. How big was that win yesterday? It was kind of a crazy fourth quarter there. Yeah, it was you know big win. Definitely, you know, something we planned all week to go down there and uh, just handle business, get on the right track, get us back to you know five hundred, and uh, just go out there and just play together and just come back with the W. How would you evaluate? You know, I, I guess it's always tougher to evaluate your own performance, but like when you look at Sunday, you made a what, three pass breakups and it's always seem to be in the right spot. When you go back and look at a game tape, how do you evaluate it? Do you look at, I did that well and that well and that well, or are you the opposite maybe and trying to find, like how do you evaluate your own tape? Uh, you know, I, I go back, I look at it. Sometimes I really, you know, I look at the uh, the good plays that I made, and but most times I, you know, I always look at the plays that, that I could have made or plays that I didn't make that I should have made. So, you know, I try to grade myself hard and uh, look at things that I could do better. The volume of times where you can say that I didn't do that right or I needed to do that better. Is, is that number getting smaller than maybe it was last year, maybe it was earlier in the year? Uh, I'm not, I don't, I don't know. I'm not really looking at that in particular. It's just, like I said, I just go out in there and just put pressure on myself, grade myself, see what I could have did right, what I didn't do right, and just going like that. I'm not really looking into, you know, did I do better last week compared to this week? Not really comparing. Right. I mean, if you, I know you're not into rankings. You said that last week, but right. if you look at the statistics of what you've given up when targeted, it's it's really low. Um, what do you think is working for you? What do you think has kind of led to those types of numbers? Uh, preparation, just uh, trusting the the scheme and defense that we got going into the game, just the game plan itself, and uh, just holding myself accountable and doing my job. How do you how do you study receivers? Uh, you know, just going and watch film, just looking at concepts, uh, tips from the coaches, of course, throughout the week, but just looking at concepts, any type of thing I could pick up on, whether it be, you know, stance, uh, sometimes, you know, route variations, anything like that. Just little tips like that is, you know, helps my game a little bit. How has that evolved for you? Evolved? Yeah, whether, maybe whether from high school or college or college to here, or even last year to this year, like what yeah, just I say more so just being around uh, the guys in the uh, not locker room, but my position, just coaches like picking up tips and uh, getting better, watching film, just understanding the uh, little details that come with uh, just playing faster and being able to uh, be ahead a little bit. Was there a guy who has like given you a lot of advice on how to watch opposing receivers or was there a coach? Was there, you know, somebody at Clemson who kind of said, hey, you know, this is how I do it and like it clicked for you to do it like that? Yeah, uh, you know, I can I can name a lot of people that, you know, helped me out with that, but somebody in particular, I didn't really start watching film, of course, until college. So I get that to my uh, DB coach, um, Mike Reed. You know, just going in, just sometimes I remember he used to give us like a, a sheet of paper just for us to go down the list of things that we need to look at when we watch a film versus, you know, receivers or just, you know, anything like that. So he really like told me, to, you know, what, what to watch out for going into the week. Would that sheet of paper be full or would it be empty and you'd have to fill it in type of thing where he's like, I kind of want you to. I want to see where your head is at. Nah, it's just it's just all you know. Self preference, like you can take it in, and nine times out of ten, I never really took the sheet, but I always, cause the sheet had so much stuff, so I never really like took the sheet. I did my freshman year, I took it, but other than that, never really asked for it, cause I already uh, knew from the sheet what I need to look at. Oh right, okay. So I, did you kind of transition like what Mike Reed would put on that sheet once you got to the league? Like, did you use that as like a template for how you broke down receivers or how you studied them? Or? Yeah, so, you know, just from the sheet itself, you would pick up things that, like I said, would be a whole bunch of things on the sheet. So I, 
certain things I didn't, I really felt like I didn't really need. I just picked up what I needed off the sheet and just, you know, played with it and uh, just helped me going throughout the week for games. Is there, a, is there a balance between having a lot of studying that's like in your head and maybe where you might be thinking too much because you have all this information? Is there like a balance for you that you found works? Right, you know, I don't like going into the week uh, thinking too much. You know, I try to keep my my uh, my head simple and just being able to just go play because I don't like, you know, when you're thinking too much, I feel like, you know, you play slow. Right. So, you know, I just like to anticipate and uh, just trust my ability and just go make plays. Do you feel like you learn about uh, – you, you, you obviously don't shadow, but do you feel like you learn about – the guys you're playing, kind of like as you're playing them, right? That like 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 when you're seeing them like in action, you feel like you're learning about these guys over the course of the game. Yeah, definitely throughout the game, just coming coming in uh, the first series of the game, just anticipating, like I said, just anticipating what I'm gonna get, and then throughout the game, you you know start to get more comfortable and feel feel out a receiver, or certain formations or anything like that, and you know just start playing ball, start playing good ball. Like, do you have a specific strategy for like when you're watching a guy? Like, do you watch, say, the number one receiver on Tuesday, like the number two receiver on Wednesday? Like, do you break it down like that? Like, how do you break down when you're watching what you're watching? Uh, usually, I just like I said, um, just I find the top receivers on the team, or whatever, and then I just try to find tips on them, and then try to see. Uh, route variations, anything like that, that I can pick up on. Not too many route variations, but ones that I know that show the most common, you know, them the ones I try to master before the game. How how much do you have books on on individual guys at this point? Because you're still young enough in your career, like, you know, vet guys like Jenkins, like Slay, like, you know, those guys will have, they'll be like, I know everything about Devontae Adams or guys in their division. How much do you have on guys at this point, or is that still an evolving process for you? Because yeah, I feel like it's definitely still an evolving process. You know, um, every receiver is different. You get different things out of every, uh, each receiver, each matchup. So uh, I don't have a booklet or anything like that, but I trust my preparation. So that's that's their, you know, that's what they do, and I do this. So. Do you save your notes? Yeah, I save my notes, especially like during the season, Never, especially like for division games and playoffs, you know, just being able to double back or whatever, and it's always a good thing. Is there, does it just feel different this year? It just seems like even going back to camp, yeah, you, especially with, if it's you and Ritt or you and Kyle, it seems like the, that, the, that the positioning was always so good, right? And just in terms of you always kind of being in the right spot, playing confident right. and physical, right? It, it, does it feel in some way different? Do you feel like that your confidence and your ability is at a point where, okay, I, like, I can do this no matter who I'm lined up against? Uh, just playing corner itself, you got to have self-confidence out the gate. You know, just going and lining up against anybody. You can't be def mentally defeated out the gate. So just lining up against Kyle Red and, you know, Russ, all, you know, the whole yeah. receiving core throughout practice, I just try to, Make sure I'm in right position, make plays on the ball, and just giving them a, a good look as as they give me a good look, leading up to game weeks and stuff like that. Dude, where do you keep your notes? Like, it, I, I know that sounds like a very minutia type question, but like, is it in like an app on your phone? Is it in a like a file? Like, do you have a you know a zip drive for a laptop? Like, do is it handwritten? Like, do you have no? Do you actually have notebooks? Like sheets of paper? Like what Mike would tell you to do? Or yeah, I mean. I keep my notes, paper, note, not not notebook, but the iPad, just wherever. Are you an organized guy, or are they like, how It's are it's organized. Work? It's <laughs> it's organized. Everything I do is organized. So, you know, sometimes I feel like writing in the tablet. Sometimes I want to write on some paper. It just depends. Do you always have like? Do you always have that out with you when you're watching film? Like, are you always kind of yeah. scratching notes that way? Yeah, it's out with me. I know it's, he, he, you know the, the coverage is kind of different sometimes in terms of just looking at when you're targeted, but there there are times, uh, especially where it just 
in man, it doesn't seem like you're targeted very much, right? How do you kind of stay engaged when you go through, you play 72 snaps or something like that, you play a high number and you see the ball twice, right? Is there something about staying locked in when you just, you just never see the ball? Yeah, you definitely got to stay locked in. I, like I said before, just going into each play, I'm thinking past every play, like, you know, not I'm not thinking run. I'm I'm out there to guard a receiver, so I'm thinking pass before run. My job is pass first, so um, just being able to go out there, eat snap, and just not get complacent. Not not uh, you know what I mean? Not get complacent and just take care of my side and my business is what I'm here to do. Some corners aren't very active in the run. Um, you are. Is, is that something that you were taught early? Is that a point of pride that you obviously that's not going to affect you know your passing stats or whatever? But to be involved in, in the run game like you are. Yeah, I take pride in uh, being involved in the run. Just uh, just feel like that's just part of playing defense. Yeah, right. You know, just being able to uh, play corner, but also be able to come up and tackle. It's just. Something I pride myself on. Have you talked to guys, like, you know, not getting targeted a ton, have you talked to other corners who've experienced that to, to kind of kind of see how they handle it at all? Like, again, just you being a young guy, like, trying to get advice and... No, I haven't, I haven't uh, reached out to anybody. Did that happen with the Clemson? Or do you feel like people threw a gym at the Clemson to, to kind of keep you from that? Uh... I don't know. At Clemson, I just, I just, you know, just played every down. Um, not getting targeted is good, so I know I'm doing something good, something right. Do you ever remind yourself of that? You know, because like that's like a catch twenty two thing, right? Like because right. you want, you want the work. Right. Well, it's, it's, right. It's, you know, I mean, being targeted and making plays, and not being targeted, not having opportunity to make plays is is a win for a court for a DB. So. Uh, that's just how I look at it, and everything would be good. How, how do you think that, that, that Fabian has been doing this year? You know, it's, it's his first opportunity to be kind of an every down corner. Yeah, Fabian been good. Definitely big brother to me, so um, always been, you know, since day one, just been, uh, been able to talk with him on the sideline, whatever, just pick his head. He always got tips and reminders. Uh, for me and for everybody in the secondary to watch out for. And uh, he's just definitely a, a, a veteran for me. You know, like I said, a big brother that just be on top of his game. This, this might feel like a weird question, but I mean, do you start thinking about Pro Bowl possibilities with the way you're playing and, and how much attention you're not getting? Yeah, I don't, especially, no, I'm not thinking about none of that. I'm just, all that'll take care of itself. Um, just go out there and just, do what I got to do, and like it, it all take care of itself. Well, it's like I set that as goals at the beginning, of, you know, at the beginning of the season. I don't right. know if that's, if it's that's definitely, kind of where you're It's definitely a goal. Like everybody has big goals, and but right now, it's, I'm just, you know, doing my part to even attain that goal. Like I got to do me. Do you feel like you've done? I mean, I feel like I know what the answer is going to be. Do you feel like you've done enough so far? I mean, it's uh, granted, you know, halfway, halfway amount of work, but. All right, I'm on, you know, feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and uh, just focusing on me. So, like, it'll all take care of itself. The, 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 the hype train is kind of taking off with you a, a little bit with all these stats that are showing that you're doing a pretty good job this year. Are you good at tuning all that out? Do you absorb it and listen to it? Uh, I don't know how you do it. Yeah, I'm real good at tuning things out. <laughs> I'm real good at tuning things out, just whether it be football or just anything outside of football, like nothing really like blows my, you know, just gets in the way. You know, I try to keep everything that, everything good, I try to keep level-headed and just keep attacking each day, like not not getting into the, to the, to the uh, media and what everybody has to say, cause it all trickles down when things go wrong. Like, right. yeah, I, it, it don't it don't phase me at all. Yeah. We have time for two more. The uh, your Instagram stories, you see, you always seem to post quotes. Right. 
when did you start doing that? Like, is what's the what's the purpose for you behind doing that? Uh, just. And the person who sent me those quotes was actually my uh, Under Armour All American uh, coach, Coach Cox. He always send like good morning texts, some like motivational texts, and it don't even be about football or anything. Like it just be for straight like motivation and. Uh, you know, I just been posting it since I feel like, you know, college, like freshman year. And it's just always like he been consistent every morning just sending me those. And we don't even really talk, he just send me those every morning. So, you know, I pay respects to that and I just feel like everybody should be able to hear it. So, I mean, when when you post it, do people respond to you when Yeah, they- <laughs> it's crazy. A whole bunch of like mostly people either they respond or they screenshot and post it on their story or whatever. So I know it's getting around and touching other people, so I just keep it going whenever uh, I, I get those messages and I find time I post them. Do, do they actually, I mean, do you take those to heart or is that or is it kind of one of those rote processes where you're like, you know, if I don't post this today, people get, right. where's my quote? Like, No, nah, I take it I take it to heart because the quotes, sometimes they, they, they hit me different. Like they hit me a certain way and they hit somebody else a different way. Like we not living the same life, so. I'll put it in my perspective and they could put it in theirs. Even if the quote don't even attain to me, like sometime I'd be like, you know, this one might not be the one for me, but it might be the one for somebody else. And is there one that for you has still stuck out? Like whether it's like a year ago, two years ago, four, like that you really like, man, like, yeah, that one really hit me. I can't, I can't do it off the top of the head. Nah, it's, it's, it's a lot though. Like even the one today, I can't even tell you off the top, but I posted that one today. It's, they all good. Awesome. Thanks, AJ. Thanks, AJ. Appreciate it, bro.